Hey everybody, Michael Fabiano here from Sports Illustrated Fantasy, and we are in the middle of buy Mageddon. We've got six teams on a buy this week. We've got injuries all over the National Football League, which means the waiver wire is going to be more important than ever. For that, we bring in SI's betting and fantasy analyst, Jen Piacenti. And Jen, let's go through each position and help folks out there who are in need, because there's a lot of people in need this week with so many teams off, so many injuries. We'll start at the quarterback position with Tua Tungavaloa. Yeah, I have to say, didn't Tua look pretty good across the pond in his first game back from the IR? I mean, he threw for over 300 yards, two touchdowns, connecting both times with Jalen Waddell. He also had uh, Mike Gesicki had a great stat line with Tua at the helm. So, you know, you might say, oh, but it was Jacksonville. Well, guess what? This week, it's Atlanta, and Atlanta is surrendering an average of 24.7 fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. Yeah, good matchup there for Tua. Also, you like Jameis Winston against Seattle and Mac Jones against the Jets. Moving on to the running back position, remember how we were all in love with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt? What a great tandem that's been in Cleveland. Uh, maybe not since Ernest Biner and Kevin Mack, for those of you uh, who know some NFL history, but both guys are banged up, which means we should be looking to Cleveland's backfield to the waiver wire. Yeah, you have to go to the waiver wire for Cleveland this week. Now, my number one target here is actually Demetric Felton because we know Kareem Hunt is going to be on the IR for a minimum of three weeks. So if and when Chubb comes back, hopefully very soon, I think he's more likely to slot into that Kareem Hunt role because he's the better pass catcher. In fact, he's been lining up at wide receiver all season, has yet to actually see a carry. However, for this week, without Nick Chubb, you certainly want to set your sights on to Ernest Johnson, who should step into that Nick Chubb role. He's only seen uh, three attempts this year. We haven't seen much. We saw him only have one pretty okay game last year versus Dallas when he stepped into the role. So don't set your expectations too high, but both Johnson and Felton are people you need to target on the wire this week, especially if you're worried about running backs for buys. And one more thing I want to mention, Someone that's available in 65% of leagues, be sure you check on J.D. McKissick. You know, we know Antonio Gibson has a stress fracture in his shin. We know McKissick is the guy they go to for third and long and the two-minute drill. He had 19 PPR points this last Sunday in a negative game script, and I'm kind of expecting the same thing this Sunday versus Green Bay. Yeah, and Jared Patterson could also be uh, on that list, if Antonio Gibson is unable to go, so keep tabs on his status. Uh, Jen also likes Mark Ingram and Ramondre Stevenson, who faces the Jets and saw his snaps and touches increase last week. Now to the wide receivers, where you have Donovan Peoples-Jones at the top of your list. Yeah, I mean, this poor Cleveland Browns team, they have 20 players uh, on the did not practice list. Uh, so it's not looking great for them and they're on a short week. So Donovan Peoples-Jones though, looked fantastic this week. 101 yards, two touchdowns. He outsnapped uh, Odell Beckham Jr. Jr. Of course, OBJ left the game, came back. There may or may not be Jarvis Landry. We know there's probably not Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. The options are just getting more and more limited. So Donovan Peoples-Jones looks like someone that we can count on for this Thursday. He's played 70% of the snaps this season. He's looking pretty, pretty good. So go ahead and put your bids in. He's available in 98% of fantasy football leagues. Jen also likes T.Y. Hilton. Marcus Calloway, whose value is on the rise with news that Michael Thomas will still be out a few more weeks. And then Tim Patrick for the Broncos on Thursday night against the Cleveland Browns. And then finally at tight end, a player that we both liked last week and he paid dividends. That's Ricky Seals-Jones. He sure did. Ricky Seals-Jones has seen 15 targets and 99 yards and a touchdown across the past two games. You know, I like it when young and experienced quarterbacks go to their tight end. I think this is going to continue to happen with no Logan Thomas. Meanwhile, Green Bay is allowing a 78.6% catch rate. That's the third highest in the league to opposing tight ends. That's great stuff, Jen. And for the rest of Jen's waiver wire pickups, make sure you check out the column at si.com slash fantasy. And also, be sure to check out Sports Illustrated's YouTube channel where you can find more videos, including fantasy advice, waiver wire advice, stardom and sit -em, and much, much more.